am a, a mother um, to a 19-year-old pre-med student named Adam. He is the love of my life. <laughs> and I am um, a wife to um, my husband, Jeffrey. We've been married six years. And I'm a stepmother to two boys, Max and Sam. And I'm a mother to a adorable puggle. <laughs> And um, I'm a sister and a daughter. And I'm also a metastatic breast cancer advocate. Career-wise, I um, was a technical recruiter for about 15 years before my diagnosis. And um, I recruited technical professionals um, for a long time. And um, I have an associate degree in actually fashion buying and merchandising and that's not exactly what I went to school for. I started out going for a nursing degree and then switched that around so I'm basically a business degree. And, um, and then after my diagnosis it was all focused on um, advocacy. That's kind of what it built into. Just trying to find out about metastatic breast cancer and um, once I realized that it was underfunded, it just kind of snowballed into advocacy and educating people and because I didn't know anything about it and um, trying to help raise money for research. Now, because there's a, um, a Susan pre-cancer and a Susan post-cancer, um, I think post-cancer, um, after cancer, they're going to say I'm very outspoken, um, very opinionated, um, but very loyal friend, um, very fiercely um, loyal to my family, um, that very protective of my family and my son. Um, before cancer, I was very quiet, very introverted, um, very, I stayed home a lot, um, read a lot, but now I'm very outspoken. <laughs> Three things that people don't know about me. I am claustrophobic and I don't like crowds. They freak me out. I am terrified of spiders. Don't like them. And what else? I, I can sort of play the piano sort of. I took a lot of lessons when I was younger and I had a piano in my house um, growing up so I can do a little bit of that. When I was diagnosed, before I was diagnosed, um, I had a lot of back pain that um, I kind of ignored for a while. I was, um, I had just turned 43 and I have, was newly married. I had just remarried and um, had a, just gained two stepsons and we were kind of getting in the groove of a blended family. So I was kind of ignoring a lot of my back pain and I had some pain in my side and just kind of figured, you know, we had just moved and that was all of that. So it went on for a while and I finally decided I would seek um, some help with my doctor. I figured maybe it was a um, kidney infection. So I went to my primary care doctor and she ran some tests thinking, you know, it might be a, a UTI. And it wasn't. Um, and so she sent me for further testing and I had um, a CT scan. And that's when she found um, a lesion on my ribs. And she didn't really tell me what that meant. Um, but she just said, oh, well, we found this, you know, lesion on your ribs, and she kind of glossed over it, and she said, but we're going to send you, I want to send you for some more testing, and I ended up having um, an MRI on my lumbar and thoracic spine, and after that um, is when they found um, a larger tumor um, in my thoracic spine. Um, it was pretty large, and that's what was causing the back pain. And when she told me that, um, that's when she told me it was cancer. She knew that it was cancer. 
and um, she didn't call me. I had to call her. I was scheduled to have a knee surgery um, that next week and um, for a different reason. And my husband, Jeff, was going out of town. And so I called, and I wanted to know the results. I'm like, okay, I need to know what's going on. And um, so she said, well, she goes, I was going to wait until after your surgery, but since you called me, um, she said, you know, I you know, had to speak with an oncologist, and she didn't really want to tell me. And we're in the car on the way to the airport, and she said, I spoke with an oncologist, and, you know, it looks like it's um, a cancer, but we don't know what kind of cancer, and she's talking really fast, and everything just kind of blended together, and they didn't know if it was bone cancer. They had no idea what it was. They didn't know where it was coming from. Um, and they realized that um, um, they were going to have to do more testing and all of that. So she said to go ahead with the knee surgery, and they would um, go through with more testing after that. And so my husband had to get on a plane knowing that I had cancer and we didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and I kept that secret to myself um, for a week. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell my son. Um, it wasn't until after my knee surgery that um, I told my parents because they were staying with me and um, because they wanted me to have a PET scan after that. Um, I had the PET scan and um, I remember my doctor calling me at the PET scan at 7 o'clock in the morning and she called me at 5 o'clock at night and she said well she goes it looks like it's breast cancer which threw me for a loop because I'm thinking to myself how can it be breast cancer if I have cancer in my in, in my spine in my rib and, I'm, and I said to her I go what does that mean and um, she said, she's like, well, she's like, well, well, I have to consult an oncologist. I'll make appointments for you. And I immediately said to her, I go, well, what stage? I don't know what that means, what stage? And I really wanted her to say, and I said to her, is it three? Is it four? What does it mean? And she's like, we'll have to, she just, she wouldn't tell me. She didn't want to say it because she's a GP. She said, don't worry, we'll, we'll get it figured out. So I got right on the computer. And my son was in his room. My husband wasn't home yet. And that's when I started to figure out on my own what it was. And um, I had to wait until Jeff got home. And all I could do was pace and um, trying to figure out how I was going to tell my son. He was a freshman. He was going to be a freshman in high school. And I didn't, he already was going to be getting into high school and he was going to have all of these new things happening to him. And I didn't know how he was going to take the news. And as soon as Jeff walked in the door, I just hit him with it's breast cancer and it's stage four. And I may only have a few years to live. And he just hugged me, and we just stood there in the living room. And um, he started researching right away what hospital, where I should go, where would be the best place. You know, she, the doctor I saw was very nice. And she, she did. She explained that, you know, even though it was metastatic breast cancer, that she would do her best to treat me and try to keep the cancer, you know, at bay, but there was no cure. And eventually I would die from this. Um, but, you know, she said some of her patients have lived a, a, a while and that they, they've done very well. Um, and they have a lot of trials and things going on at Sloan. And um, she said she would do her best. And so, um, she started me on um, an aromatase inhibitor, and um, I 
I couldn't handle that particular one, so I went on another one. And um, so now I'm on my fourth treatment. <clears throat> and um, I've been um, so far good on that for the, the last two years. And I will have lived with metastatic breast cancer this August, so will be my fifth year. So we decided um, that we were going to sit all three boys down together and tell them as a family. And I insisted that we not tell them the whole truth right away. We were just going to tell them it was breast cancer because I didn't want to overload them at once, especially Adam. Um, I didn't want to overwhelm them and scare them and I wanted to kind of ease them all into this. Um, they were dealing with a lot um, with just moving in all together and getting to know everybody. You know, this was a lot all at once. So we sat them down and they knew I had been going through testing and, you know, we told them. And Jeff was really good about it and he, you know, we were kind of like upbeat. Um, Max and Sam were upset, of course. Um, Adam just, he didn't say a word. Um, he would just went blank. And then he just went through. Um, he went in his room and then I followed him in and, and that's when he broke down and he cried. And I just told him, I said, I'm gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. You know, we're gonna take care of it and everything will be okay. Um, it was maybe a week or two later that um, Jeff told his kids everything. And he told them about the whole diagnosis. And I had to tell Adam the truth because I couldn't risk him finding out. And um, that was a tough conversation. Um, I went ahead and I emailed his school and let them know, I didn't tell him I did this, but I, I emailed the principal and his teachers and let them know what was going on so that if they saw anything or if he was upset that they kind of knew how to handle everything. And they were wonderful. Um, they really were understanding and um, they, they, they really kind of took care of him for me while he was at school. Um, he still doesn't really talk about it to this day. Um, Adam's kind of like on a need-to-know basis as far as my health. Um, he only wants to hear whatever he really needs to hear. Um, but he doesn't like to talk about it, even though he's a pre-med student right now. Um, and that's part of the reason why he's gone in that direction, is this diagnosis. It, it definitely ended the honeymoon phase, for sure, um, because it put a lot of pressure on Jeff and I. So it definitely um, you know, changed our relationship really quickly. It was a lot of stress and a lot of pressure, and you know, he worried a lot. He still does. Um, and for me, um, with all of the medications and you know, side effects and things like that, I mean, my personality, not personality, but my, um, you know, with hormone changes and things like that, you know, yeah, I changed a lot. Um, you know, you get angrier faster and, um, you know, you don't handle certain situations the way you normally would. Um, my mom didn't handle it very well. Um, she refused to accept the terminal diagnosis. You know, oh, you'll, you'll get better, you'll beat this, you'll be fine, um, which angered me a lot. Um, I needed to, people to accept it. I needed people to understand I'm not going to, you know, survive it. I'm going to, at some point, get worse. Um, I'm not afraid of that anymore. I understand it. It's just what's going to happen. And I, I can't have people live, it, it, makes, it makes me feel like I'm going to let them down with them thinking that way. 
because it's just not going to happen. Um, but I'm closer with my mom. Um, you know, we talk every day on the phone. And, um, and I'm close with my in-laws, a little closer with them. So I think overall it's, it's, it's helped. We've kind of gotten a little closer. For a while it was harder on Jeff and I. You know, it does change a relationship that way, but I think after, after five years, we've kind of all gotten a little closer. The most important thing to me right now is making sure that my son completes his college education and that he gets his medical degree.